Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Eternal Hope Anglican Church. Nice to see you. Uh, new faces. Always welcome whenever you'd like to join us. This is Eternal Hope Anglican Church, and today is the order for the administration of the Lord's Supper according to the, the Holy Eucharist Renewed An Ancient Text for the fifth Sunday of Epiphany. I'm the interim priest in charge, Reverend Janet Gulliver, and uh, yeah, welcome. We do wear masks at all times for anybody who's new. I see that that's a given. Thank you. And uh, that is uh, Jesus in the boat of the fishermen leading into our gospel reading this morning. Faith and obedience. Let us begin. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The call for purity, please join me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. This is the colic for the fifth Sunday of Epiphany. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, keep your household, the church, continually in your true religion, that we who trust in the hope of your heavenly grace may always be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll have our first lesson, Psalm 85, read by Dana. Psalm 85. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. The word of the Lord. And now we'll have our gradual hymn, Pass It On, played by Jerry and Gord.
It only takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon, oh, soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone. You want to pass it on. What a wondrous time in spring when all the trees are budding. Birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you want to sing. It's fresh like spring, you want to pass it. wish for you, my friend, this happiness that i found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountaintop. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Yes, when we experience God's love, we do want to pass it on. It's very difficult to hold it in. Thank you, Jesus. And now we'll have our gospel reading read by Alan, Pastor Alan. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord I'm just going to move my computer out of the way this time as it has been a 
thorn in my side. Please be seated. Let's take a moment just to bow our heads and, and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for being in our midst. And we pray that we would hear your voice, trust in you, and be obedient with all our heart. Help us to clearly see how you are working in our life each and every day. For you've said you go before us and you will be with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. Heavenly Father, we hear your promises and have faith. Help us to hear your voice and to trust and obey your word. And we pray this in your mighty name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A funny story, but not a true story this time, unlike last week. A woman was being tailgated by a stressed out man on a busy boulevard. Suddenly the light turned yellow, just in front of her, so she had to stop. And stopping caused the man following close to slam on his brakes and his cell phone goes flying. So he was furious, he's honking the horn, he's screaming in frustration because he's missed his chance to get through the light. He's in a rush. And as he's in mid rant, he gets a knock on the window and it's a police officer asking him to get out of the car, put his hands on the car. He handcuffed him and brought him into the station. He was searched, fingerprinted, photographed and placed in a holding cell. After a couple hours, a policeman approached the cell and opened the door. He was escorted back to the booking desk where the original arre arresting officer was waiting for him with his personal effects. And this officer said, I'm very sorry for this mistake. You see, I pulled up behind your car while you were blowing your horn, flipping off the lady in front of you and cussing a blue streak at her. And I noticed on the back of the car, a bumper sticker. What would Jesus do? the choose life license plate holder, the follow me to Sunday school bumper sticker, and the chrome plated Christian fish emblem on the trunk. Naturally, I assumed you'd stolen the car. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of the story is be careful of our actions. We know God is watching, but so are many other people. In our gospel reading today, Jesus called the disciples to follow him and they obeyed him and how are we with that as you may have noticed by now a lot of my talks seem to be focused on trust and obey being obedient to the Lord having faith well Simon Peter is obedient more than once in today's reading alone. These fishermen were out in their boats all day, all night. They were exhausted. They didn't catch a thing. They were tired. They were cleaning off their nets. They were ready to go home, to eat, to sleep, to rest. Perhaps they were discouraged because they hadn't caught a thing. Well, Jesus approaches Simon Peter and asks him to put his boat out. He says, put it out a little from the land. And the reason Jesus wanted him to do that is because there's a big crowd following him and he wants to be able to, to get out in front of them to be able to speak to them. And Simon acts right away, puts the boat out so that Jesus is able to teach. 
One thing that I noticed in this reading, as well as an earlier reading we did two weeks ago, Jesus sits to teach. Apparently, that was the way it was done. That was, that was a custom, um, to sit to teach. You, you stood to read, but you sat to teach. Apparently, sitting to teach was a custom, and a teacher sits to teach. So Jesus sat in the boat, and the boat became Jesus' pulpit. I often wonder how sitting in a boat, a fisherman's boat, you could actually even be seen on shore. Um, but we, we don't know the setup. There could have been a bank people were standing on. He, it could have been a, a raised seating in the boat. Um, but we do know that the voice travels over water, uh, which is probably one of the things that were in his mind, that he'd be able to speak and people would hear him. So Simon, and even though he was exhausted, <clears throat> he put the boat out um, for, for Jesus to teach. And after Jesus was done teaching, he asked Simon another question. He tells him, put out the boat into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now Simon was exhausted and he replied, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. And I expect there was a big pause before he replied, but at your word, I will let down the nets. This is Simon's second act of obedience. How ready would we be to go back out, put down our nets, and catch, attempt to catch more fish when we've been doing it all day, we're exhausted, we've already cleaned the nets, and we were ready to go home. But we know Jesus asks things of us too that sometimes we find very difficult. Simon must have sensed something. He calls him master. He says, master, we toiled all night and took nothing. Master is a title for a person of high authority, a commander or an officer. He sensed something about Jesus when we hear him say, Master. How did Simon know? Jesus' presence was obvious to Simon, and he accepts Jesus' words as authoritative, and he obeys them, and perhaps he accepts his word as he would his father's word. It would appear that if Simon says, you know, if Jesus says something, Simon will do it. He's obedient to Jesus' word. Even after a full day of working, of getting nothing in return. But by being obedient, he's opening up the door to miracles, an abundance of fish. And we need to learn from that. Jesus will also open up the door for us. We are to be obedient, and I talked about that a lot last week. And it's not for nothing. God calls us to be obedient. We're, we're to do it and not expect to receive anything. But he does provide an abundance. All too often we measure faith and, and obedience like we've often heard in scriptures, a mustard seed. All you need is a mustard seed of faith to follow me. Often we might measure it as in an eyedropper, a little bit of a drop. That's our faith. That's our obedience. That's our coming to church every Sunday. Amen. We come to church every Sunday. But Jesus wants a bucket full of our drops of faith and obedience. It's like the mustard seed. If, if we don't take that mustard seed, that, that going to church every Sunday and plant it, that faith cannot grow in us. Tiny faith and obedience generates little rewards. 
but Jesus prefers we give him our whole faith and obedience, and he will give us an abundance of rewards. Even though we don't give to receive, we don't expect anything in return, we are filled with his love and his faith and we want to share. But Jesus still gives us abundantly rewards. Jesus gave abundantly to Simon Peter and his crew. The fish in the net was so plentiful that he needed to call his partner's boat to come out and help him. And even at that, both boats almost sink. You can only imagine how many fish that would be. We can easily carry one or two fish, at least I'm told. <laughs> My husband loves to fish. But a net full? Not quite so easy. Can you imagine their initial thoughts? Oh no, here we go again, we have to start over, to the excitement. Wow, look what Jesus can do for us. This is amazing. And Simon Peter recognized his unworthiness in this whole miracle, and he says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. If only we could approach God regularly with such reverence. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Simon Peter is saying, I'm not worthy of your generosity, Lord. We know that's not the only time when Jesus has given abundantly. We've read earlier in this last month of the wedding at Cana, the wine. We've read, I'm sure, of the manna being provided in the wilderness of the unending supply of oil to a widow with children, or the mouths of 500 people to feed from five loaves and two fishes. They were all fed abundantly through God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is part of this working trinity that we have. We are so blessed. The miracle of abundance, while meeting the needs of all the people, most importantly demonstrates, reveals the power of God. When Jesus performed miracles throughout the Gospels, people would listen, people would follow. The disciples were no exception. These fishermen left everything and followed Jesus and became his disciples. Just think over approximately 2,000 years ago, this happened, and we are hearing it now. This story is nourishing us spiritually now from something that a disciple did that many years ago. I'm sure Simon Peter never expected that he would be the focus today. Come follow me and be fishers of men. We know that God calls whomever God calls. And I think of the call on Simon, later to be called Peter. How he started perhaps with that mustard seed of faith. And we know that that did not grow into a bucket immediately. It takes work, takes time. We know that Peter lacked when it came to Jesus' crucifixion. He denied Christ three times. But we also know that at Jesus' resurrection, that bucket was full of faith and obedience. He went out being a strong witness for Christ. He had to go through a time of maybe uncertainty, 
maybe fear, seeing the one you followed being crucified. This isn't supposed to happen to him. Look at what he does for us. How can this be happening? How can this person that I've put everything into be leaving us now? But we know we are in a different position. We know that Jesus has risen from the dead. We know that he's with us. We know that we should be not holding back. In spite of everything, God calls all of us at different times, in different ways, and not because we're worthy, not because we're capable, only because God deems it. It's when we say yes to God's calling, when we're obedient to God, that exciting things begin to happen in our lives. And like I said last week, it doesn't mean there's not suffering and pain. Don't, don't get me wrong, but our lives become so filled, so rewarding. That empty spot in our stomach that we seem to want to fill with things doesn't need to be filled with things because it's supposed to be filled with God. It is exciting to see it happen, to see people come to faith, to see a change made, to see them pray for somebody, and a miracle takes place. Not everyone we pray for receives a miracle because it's up to God. But Jesus can turn our most humble act of obedience into a net-breaking, boat-sinking miracle of abundance. So let us continue to hear the call and to be obedient to him. Timothy Keller wrote this. God will, either, God will either give us what we ask for or give us what we would have asked for if we knew everything he knows. So if he doesn't answer our prayers right away, he's got a reason usually a very good one. Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is still applicable and relevant today. We thank you that you still speak to your people today. You still call us. Lord God, please help us. We are weak and blind. We are sinners. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, if we do not see the plan you have for us, give us peace and comfort in knowing that you have a plan for us and will be with us every step of the way. Fill us with your joy, the joy of the Lord, and reign in us with your power, the power of abundance. And we pray all this in your mighty name, Jesus Christ, our one and only Lord God, the Son, Amen. And now we will stand to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll have the prayers of the people led by Gord. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Father, we pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Father, we pray for the Anglican church in North America. And we pray for Archd Archbishop Foley Beach. And we lift up to you uh, as, as well, especially today, Bishop-elect Dan Gifford. Today he is, is his consecration, Father. And we ask th that you anoint and equip him for this highly important calling and use him mightily in the power of the Holy Spirit as he ministers within the An Anglican Network in Canada and beyond. We pray for Bishop Charlie. We pray for our, our interim pastor, Janet. We pray for all clergy. We pray for lay leaders and people of all parishes and church plants, fellowships, and missionaries. Praying for them, Father, and asking for your assistance that they may successfully contribute to the mission of your church and that in faithful witness, the church may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Father, we also pray for the work of mission and we pray today specifically for the Diocese of Upper Shire in Malawi. Father, you have provided gifts of various ministries for the equipping of the saints and for the building up of the body of Christ. We're so encouraged by this as we read of these gifts being utilized in the Diocese of Upper Shire, Malawi for evangelism and pastoral care, education and training. We also thank you, Father, for the commitment of the people of St. John's, Vancouver, to this ministry. And we pray, Father, asking that the financial, emotional, and spiritual needs of the Diocese of Malawi will be met, and that there will be great joy at the fruit of their endeavors. We pray to you, Lord.
We pray for those who do not yet believe, for those who have lost their faith, those who are traveling paths, Father, that will not lead to you. We pray that their eyes will be opened, the soil of their hearts will be softened, and that they will receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, Lord. Lord. Father, you sent us your son, Jesus, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. And so, Father, we pray for peace, again asking that people's eyes will be opened and their hearts will be softened, that greed, pride, and anger, which turn nation against nation, race against race, and even people within countries against each other, that there will be reconciliation, Father. We pray and ask that you will guide and direct those in authority, those who lead and those who follow to accept your rule. We pray to you, Lord. Lord. Father, we pray for those in trouble, danger. We pray especially for refugees, Father, who are fleeing tyranny and oppression, praying for their safety. We pray for those who are being persecuted, and we lift up to you especially, Father, those who are being persecuted for worshiping you through your beloved son, Jesus, wherever they may be. Protect them, Father. Encourage them. Give them strength. We pray to you, Lord. Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body, or in spirit. Especially those, Father, who are suffering because of this pandemic. You are the true healer. We do pray for our doctors and our nurses and our scientists, but they are your healing instruments. Father, we ask that you heal Gary, Randy, Kate, and Stephanie, Stephen and Gordy and others we now mention on our lips or in our hearts. Father, we pray for those who suffer from addictions, those victimized by abuse. We pray, Father, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, Lord. God of comfort, We lift up to you those who sorrow, asking, Father, that you come close to them, that they come close to you, so that they will be sure that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall separate them from your love. We pray to you, Lord. Father, we pray for our friends and our families. We ask that you bless those whom we love, that in drawing close to you, we may be drawn close to each other. 
We pray to you, Lord. For all, Father, whom we may have injured or offended, we pray for healing, reconciliation. We pray to you, Lord. And Father, we pray for grace. Grace to amend our lives and further your reign. We pray to you, Lord. Remember, Father, your people bowed before you and those who are absent through age, sickness, or any other cause. Remember especially, Lord, those whom we may have forgotten to pray for. You are the helper of the helpless, the savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. You know the need of all and have heard each prayer. Save us in your merciful loving kindness and eternal love. And we ask this through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we do thank you, Lord. We thank you for being able to come together during this time of COVID. And we thank you that we can reach people through technology. Now let us stand as we humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent, and with true faith, turn to him. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him <clears throat> should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. And let us greet one another. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And now we'll move into our offertory hymn, Amazing Grace. And not just Amazing Grace, but My Chains Are Gone by Chris Tomlin. Thank you, Gord, for running back up here once again.
how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior's rescued me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, His word, my hope, secure. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior's friends to me. And land and flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior's friends to me. And land and flood. Ending love, amazing grace. How beautiful you are. And Lord, we thank you for the gifts you've given us and the gifts that are provided here today. We pray your blessing upon each one of us and on our offerings and on upon what we will be receiving from you. So yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Feel free to be seated. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, 
he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all men for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Please stand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Christ, our Passover lamb, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with your spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries 
that we are living members of the body and your son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do your work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. So Alpha has started, but the first night was more of a celebration type thing. So if you hadn't had an opportunity to join us, no worries. You can join still um, Wednesday night, 6.30 by Zoom. Let me know if you want the link uh, for the Zoom meeting sent to you. I'd be glad to do it. And Ash Wednesday and the Pancake Supper. We know that in order to do the pancake supper, food will need to be purchased. So we will need to discuss this perhaps after the service to see whether we're gonna go ahead. And if we go ahead, um, I, I'd suggest that it be just for family members and, and the congregants given the time that we're in now. And also Ash Wednesday service is March 2nd. I'll be announcing that as we get closer as well, but it will be at six o'clock if that works for everyone. Um, if it doesn't work for you, let me know and you know we can change the time to a little later if that's, uh, if that's better. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And our closing hymn is Lord Reign in Me. Michael will lead us. So here's the exciting part. Well, it was lots of exciting parts, but page or part two of uh, the gentleman who got pulled over in the joke is when he left the uh, police station, he was able to look up and he was forgiven. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but for me, that was the biggie, being forgiven. So continue to ask, Lord God, to reign in me. Every 
mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Lord, reign in me. Reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me? So won't you reign in me? So won't you reign in me? Lord, reign in us, reign in your power. Now let us go forth in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.